Hi, healthy homies, and welcome to Humanitarian Chronicles, where I highlight extraordinary people doing extraordinary things. We are here today with one of the most passionate, brilliant beings I have ever encountered on this floating rock, Marcus Rothkranz. He is a world leader, a real-life superhero of the raw food and healthy lifestyle movement. He is the real-life Benjamin Button age reverser. He promotes health in mind, body, and soul for all beings. He is the creator of the amazing World Health Project, a divinely inspired filmmaker, media master, artist, quantum physics enthusiast. He has been flown all over the world to remind people how to live. He has met with the heads of governments, was a health consultant to the U.S. military, thank God, has American Indian elders asking him how to get back in touch with nature. His book, Free Food and Medicine is a worldwide edible plant guide showing people how to use the wild plants growing in their own area as food and herbal medicine. Heal Your Life 101 is the most amazing, easiest to understand manual for healing that anyone's ever read. He has other best-selling incredible books, The Prosperity Secret, Instructions for a New Life. Oh my gosh, you are so amazing, Marcus. You inspire the hell out of me. And you do it with major flair. So... Thank you. I am so grateful to have you here in this cyber soiree. Thank you well, for I guess being here. nothing left to say. You said it all. I know, right? I know. We can stop the interview right there. Well, I wanted to just tell the audience, in case they don't know you, because who knows what my demographic is, that <laughs> who you are and why you're so amazing. You're going to tell us why you're so amazing. But, I mean, seriously, I've read your books. I, I'm a health coach myself, and I it is required reading. Your books are required reading. Your Heal Yourself 101 is a must for all of my clients. I'm like, I can't work with you until you read this book. I mean, how did you get to the paradigm shift within yourself? How did you come to these realizations? Uh, well, I, I did. I, well, basically, I almost died. And I said, well, obviously, it's not working. So I got to figure something else out. Um, I was the good little boy. I was the little boy that always wanted to do things right. I never, to this day, I've never drank. A drop of alcohol. Wow. I never smoked a cigarette. Never did a drug. Never, not, never even touched coffee. Not even coffee. Wow. And yet, by the time I was in my late twenties, I was dying. My doctor said your heart's about to give out. Uh, your, I mean, your, my lungs were filled with fluid. I, I, uh, I had glasses thicker than the windshield of my car. I mean, I, I, I you name it, I had it. And wow. my relationship was falling apart. And and you know. I, Name the bad situation. I had it. And I said, well, what? I don't get it. Like, I never partied. I don't do bad things. I'm a good little boy. I do what I'm told. Why am I falling apart? And um, and I worked in Hollywood. I, I did, you know, I had the house, the picket fence, the wife, the Hollywood job. I had all the stuff they tell you to get. Wow. And I wasn't happy and I was dying. So basically I gave it all up. And... Uh, I guess one of the most fun things I ever did was I most of the stuff that I had left after I told my friends, take what you want. I don't want anything anymore. And then whatever was left, I put it in the U-Haul, backed it into the state dump, opened it up, and I just started throwing it. Clothes, TV sets, photo albums. And every time I heard something smash, it was like a weight got lifted off me. Oh, my gosh. And it, it was so cool seeing my stuff get smashed, like and me doing it. And so anyway, and then I, I just basically totally gave up. I went out to the desert. Um, took my clothes off, walked in the desert naked and said, I don't care if I come back or if I survive. I just didn't care anymore. I, 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 it's not that I didn't, it's not that I wanted to die. I just didn't care. I didn't have any more need. I didn't want to answer, have to answer to anybody. Didn't want to account for where I was, what I was doing, who I was with, why, what, mortgages. Yep. Not, I just wanted to out of it. So nervous breakdown. No, it wasn't. A <laughs> it was the most peaceful thing I ever did was to give up and oh. to not have to answer to anybody anymore. And yeah. uh, I, I realized the greatest moment of your life is the moment before you die because you, at that moment you give up. You just don't – you just accept. You're okay with everything. And that's what I was. I was suddenly okay with everything. I just – whatever. I don't care. Wow. You know? I, and, wow. Oh my God. I have so many questions. Like did some story that you read or book that you read or life experience that you read inspire you to do that? And did you go on a program or you literally no. got naked and walked out into the desert for, I just couldn't take it anymore. Oh I, 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 I never liked wearing clothes. I, I, 
<laughs> it's so yeah. funny these people that say you're not natural. You you know you're you're so plastic. You're Hollywood. You have you bleach your hair and, and blah blah blah. I said, well, look at you. You're wearing clothes. That's not <laughs> natural. You're on a computer. That's not natural. You know, like you can't be natural anymore. I mean, it's it, so anyway. And that's something I want to clarify between with Kara and me is, is um, we don't show the world how to be natural. We show people how to be healthy despite the unnatural things in our lives. And if we can do it, then so can you. And that's kind of the message is like, you know, I like air conditioning. I like airplanes. I like houses. I like stereos and computers and fun stuff, you know? Totally. Yeah. So, so it's just, you got to find a healthy way to live without hurting others in the world and having a good time while you're doing it. I mean, if you're not having a good time, that's the one thing about people that live forever. You know, these people that live like 120, 30, 40 years, most of them smoke, drink, they eat bad food. And how come they're, and then I see these uptight hippies, you know, Oh, you, you can't eat cashews because they're, they're, they're boiled. Like, these people die when they're 60 and 70. I've seen raw food people die in their 60s and 70s because they're so uptight. And these people that drink and smoke, they live to be 120, 130. What's the the key there is it's more than just what you eat. Obviously, eating right helps, but not letting things get to you, being free, being, um, you know, stress kills more than anything. Of course. So you got to enjoy life. And and that's a big part of it. So what I kind of tell people is the whole package deal. Like, what if those people that were 120, 130 didn't smoke and drink? And, right. you know, right. they'd probably be 170 or 80. Or right. They were, With a know. full head of hair. With a full head of hair and no beer belly. Yes. Right, right. As you right. say, you don't go out into the woods and see a gray-haired, fat-gutted, balding, lethargic deer. Now do ya? You're no. Quoted. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no. They are vibrant and healthy and galloping and scampering and eating out of your lawn garden. You got exactly. to put fence up. Exactly. Yeah. Until you, you, they you die. Don't see, you don't see fat, bald, gray-haired deer in the woods. <laughs> That's <and> right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, yeah. Yeah, totally. so that that that's it. You know, I was like, I enjoy life. I'm not. I I am not one of these natural. What do you call it? Uh, uptight, militant <laughs> people who nitpick life. But I'm, what if someone came at you with plastic? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what if someone came at you with a plastic water bottle during one of your presentations? What would you do? I'd be happy for them. Great. Yeah, you great, know, I, great. I like Cause you can transmute that. You can transmute those phytoestrogens. Um, you, I swear, Marcus, you're like the picture, you're the poster child for living peacefully within society. That is like my biggest struggle because I am one of those hippies who could die at, I mean, yes, I am wearing a sparkly crown on my shirt in honor of you, the king of raw food and some crystal balls on my fingers. But I really am that uptight, like, what? I, no, I won't drink out of plastic. No, I will not eat a cashew because it might be a neurotoxin and full of mold. No. But, um, I mean, honestly, you're like, if I could picture what Jesus is like, even, I mean, maybe it's because you wear the cross. I don't know. It would be you, but black and maybe with my hair, but whatever. No, honestly, like maybe Jesus's brother. Cause I picture Jesus more chill, but really, truly like you're living the scene gospel of peace. You are living what those ancient works of wisdom promote and right. like so yeah what how can you give a little bit of guidance to get to where you are like happy healthy and peaceful within the chaotic society what can we do to get to where you are well the first step is to ease up yeah like, <laughs> Let go. I mean, I, that's why I wrote my book, uh, Instructions for a New Life, a little pocketbook. That was originally written for prison inmates. Um, oh, wow. I was approached by somebody who uh, was who supplies them with. You know, obviously, they, they 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 apparently have stores and where they can buy stuff, and a lot of them like to read. And they yeah. actually genuinely want to, to get their life together. And, and But when they get out of society, and society doesn't want them. They don't know where to start. So it was kind of like a, a, a captive audience. Yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> so I wrote this pocketbook for them. And as I was uh, you know, telling them, this is how you, you start over in life. And it's interesting because the person that was getting the book into the system, she was getting, uh, her husband was leaving her, midlife crisis, whatever it was, you know. Yeah. And she says, I need to read this book. And then I realized, oh, my God, 
the people in prison have it made. They got food, they got shelter, they're taken care of. They like they, they don't have to worry about am I going to be on the street tomorrow. But yep. um, a lot of mid middle aged women are afraid of that. You know, the husband starts going out with a twenty year old. The, 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 the looks are gone. The, they're worried about where am I going to be? You know, in three years, ten years. And I realized most people in the modern world are the ones that are the most, they're in a prison, a health prison, a relationship prison, or a money prison. And they're doing the things that they're doing because they have to pay bills, even though they're doing a job they don't like to pay for a house that's not their dream house. They're with somebody because that person's putting a roof over their head, but they're not really getting, there's like a codependent situation there, or... Al-Anon! You know, or they have food allergies, uh, food addictions. Like, you know, you think it's bad getting rid of the cocaine and alcohol and try to get off bread and cheese. So everybody's yeah. got some kind of prison that they're stuck in. And, and most of them are the people in the quote-unquote free world, not the prisoners in prison. They've got it made. So I realized that. that so I outlined in that book, this is the instructions for life. This is what people should know when they're three years old. Here's the basics. Here's how you should think. Here's your value system. Here's, you know, and... The problem is most people, they go 30, 40 years, they screw up, and then they – that's when they are forced to rethink everything. You know, why didn't they tell me this stuff 40 freaking years ago right. when I was a kid? Yes. You know? Yes. What? What? How do you uh, – you're one of my heroes, and you're one of my biggest inspirations in this field, in the world. How? Who were your inspirations? What books, if any, did you read about this stuff, or did you really – come to all of this naked in the desert when you were out there for 40 days jesus 40 days was it 40 days no was it 40 days how long were you out there it wasn't on purpose no i know but i mean it's a magical number you probably manifested it you knew intuitively but yeah like how did you come to this what are your go-to books before you wrote the go-to books (laughs) seriously what was I reading before yeah. that? I, I I like reading Uncle Scrooge comic books and and wow. I I don't know I like I like fantasy stuff. I'm I like if I could live anywhere in the world, it would be Disney World, Florida, or wow. you know I, I like to escape. I mean, I never I grew up on a farm in Canada in the middle of nowhere. I was one of those kids that literally had to walk a mile through the snow in the blizzards to the school bus every day, wow. braving wow. the elements with frostbite and. Um, and I, there, there was no no friends. I didn't have any. And when I went to school, I was beat up because I was the nerdy kid with the glasses and the buck teeth and the braces. And I actually had a briefcase that I carried around because I was like, I was teacher's pet. You know, I, I never got along with the kids because I thought they were too stupid. I, I always hung out with the teachers because I felt like they had something more valuable, you know. Yeah. Anyway, wow. so I was always an outcast. I never had really a lot of friends to play with. And for me, what taught me was like during the day on, on the summer days, I'd lie in the field and the, the wind and the sun and the grass and the birds would would speak to me. That That's what raised me more than anything. I felt so uh, at peace because there was no people around. People, whenever there was people around, they were always uptight. They were always in a hurry. They always had issues they were complaining about something you know their husband their job and i said why would i want to be with them look at these animals and plants they're quiet they got it made you know and um and uh and then when i went into the house at you know at night i had television that's all i had it's the only contact i had with the outside world so for me it was gilligan's island (laughs) star trek and you know bewitched gilligan all it was it was the fantasy stuff love boat and and i was just you know, I grew up in the seventies. So for me, it was either nature or fantasy world. Love it. All, all that stuff in between just bored me. I didn't oh, like the real, the real world was so boring and, and uptight. So to this day, look what I'm doing. I'm taking entertainment, fun, and I'm, I'm, I'm taking the truth of nature and presenting it in an entertaining, fun, childish Disney type way. That, he really that, is. Everybody watch all of Marcus's videos. They are so entertaining and educational, just like Disney. Yeah, you know, like like the the, the Kara spy video. Did you see that? Oh gosh, I yes, I did. Yes, I did. Just, I did. Just go to, That's yeah, so just, funny. That's so spy. great. It's whimsical. It's it's a production. 
It's a go production. To, yeah, all my, my, we had the most fun recipe. If you go to spygirl.com, that, that, that's, uh, it's she plays a, a Russian spy. Then we had princessrecipe.com where we did a little mini Disney, uh, I saw that. Cinderella production. And then we did uh, the stewardess video where I, I actually built that. an airplane upstairs. Oh my gosh. I didn't see that one. I have to see that one. Oh, stewardessrecipe.com. You got to oh check it God. out. You are the king of the URLs. What is going on? Cause yeah. Marcus wants to be reached in any number of his fantasy worlds, and there are about a thousand of them. So if you just Google Marcus, Marcus Rothkrantz, you can reach him somehow. That I am so in awe of you. Every time I look something up of yours, there's a new URL. I'm like, oh my gosh. This, this <laughs> well, guy. the reason I do that is because when people go, like you're telling somebody, oh man, that, that recipe video that just came out, uh, uh, yeah, the pizza video, right, where I play this Italian guy. I go, just go to incredipizza.com. <laughs> 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 or or uh, uh, what was some of the other ones like stewardessrecipe.com it's just it's easier to remember oh my you know? gosh or, you are just making GoDaddy so happy and Wix yeah. and and Google <laughs> thank you thank you Marcus for keeping our economy strong by yourself you're amazing well yeah it's you're living proof there's nothing extreme about this lifestyle it's just getting back to nature to the way we are supposed to live I love that you said you were laying out there under the grass and yes, I watched those same reruns. Um, I'm 40, so I got the reruns from when you saw them for the first run. I was yeah. watching them for the second run in my childhood. That's all I watched. I was not in mainstream culture. I did not do drugs. I can totally relate to what you're saying. Um, but yeah, I could you please regale us because you've pretty much written the Bible on wild foods and wild foraging. Could you tell us a few things about these things we call weeds and other wild foods yeah. that are out there? Yeah. All living things have a purpose. We just need to figure out what it is. And there's nothing in the universe that doesn't have a purpose. And it's funny how as humans, if we don't know why something exists, it scares us and we have to kill it, right? Or what we don't understand scares us. But the more you sit back and just allow things, the wonder to come to you, it's like you're just amazed with like, like some of the biggest cancer drugs out there they all came from plants originally there's some that are so uh powerful yeah that that they outlawed them because they work so well well and, there are only two yeah. percent of that plant in pharmaceutical drugs that's another video altogether but yeah right like it, there are only two percent of those healing plants in pharmaceutical drugs why aren't we just eating the plants themselves i'll let right. you go on that, yeah and there's something about when you isolate a certain element of a plant, you're kind of messing with, you're, you're screwing things up because everything in nature is in balance. Yes. And uh, when you isolate something, that that's when trouble starts. But in, in nature, um, it's just amazing. It, I really believe there there's a, 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 well, there is. You can just see it. There is a design, an intelligent design in all of everything. It, there's two, it all fits together too perfectly to um, to just be random, to just be, you know, a, a flute, but there is so much intelligence, everything, um, even in nature, like in, uh, like LA where everybody's uptight, there's a lot of St. John's group work growing around there. Naturally, you ever want to wonder I, why? I <laughs> Cause that's what that. you need to de-stress. Oh, or I like, can, oh, I can vouch. I'm from there. Yeah. I'm from L I'm from Malibu. Yeah. Yeah. Vouch. And, and, um, my, yeah. And, and there, there are, I noticed this where there, uh, like uh, where I was growing up, there was a plant growing across the street that all the birds were loving and stuff. And I realized that was salt palmetto. That that that's for male hormones. Wow. My girlfriend, at, my girlfriend at the time, she had um, a plant growing in her backyard. It just kind of just showed up out of nowhere when that's for female hormones. Nature knows what you need, and it kind of says, "Here, you need this," and it just sh puts it right in your face. And wow. The, the wild stuff like dandelions and burdock and, and you know, they, they, they grow for a reason. They clean your liver. They, they, they are, I mean, you can eat the whole dandelion plant, the, the flower. I do. It's got, it's got the highest source of less, 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 uh, yeah, less of them in the world is in the flower. Wow. Uh, the roots, the leaves, the stem, the white milky stuff. You put that on warts, moles, and skin cancer, it eats it away, uh, the, the, the resin. 
um, the latex. I mean, uh, it, it's just amazing. Everything has a purpose. It's just people don't understand. Some of it is is really strong medicine. They say it's poison. Don't eat it. Well, that's because it's strong medicine. You just don't down a bottle of strong, you know, yeah, anything. I mean, water will kill you if you have too much of it. It's called yeah. drowning. You know, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah. it's it's like you have to take it in the right proportions. You have to know how to prepare it. Like chaparral, for example, it's, it's the most common plant here in the desert out here. Um, you can't have it straight off the plant because it has uh, resins that are toxic to the liver. But if you, if, you, if you dry it for a couple months, they dissipate and then you can have it. And it's one of the most powerful cancer plants because it has mitosis inhibitors, which means yeah, any, it will not allow cells to split. And cancer is a fast splitting, uh, dividing uh, organism. So when you come in contact with mitosis inhibitors, it stops. So if it, it that's why nothing grows around the chaparral plant. But most people don't know this stuff. It's like the, 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 the natives knew this a long time ago. They've kind of lost touch with it for the most part. Um, but it, it's just amazing. There is no such thing as an unwanted plant. Matter of fact, the weeds are stronger than anything you buy in the produce department because in the produce department, this I did, I did a video pro organic versus wild. Yep. In uh, the, 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 the fields where they have organic plants, they that soil has been farmed to death for the last hundred years. There's almost no nutrition left in that soil. There's no magnesium left in any soil nowadays. Yeah. Um, and not only that, uh, the they're watered every day. You know, they have mechanical watering systems. And these plants are wimpy. They know they're going to get water. They don't have to try to do any. They're coddled. They're, they're, they're like, you know, they're, they're, they're spoiled babies. Yeah. Whereas the, 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 the wild plants, they grow out of a crack in the sidewalk. They might never get watered. They have to, they grow roots like red clover. Gloro uh, grows roots 250 feet down looking for water and it sucks up all the minerals from all deep 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 in the ground and you know saponins alkaloids glycoside all this stuff that's in there and it transmutes them into the, the, a weed is so concentrated in power that if you just have one bite of, of um, a wild plant you just wow this is intense you know Definitely. and you just feel it and whereas the stuff you buy at the grocery store there's no taste i mean it's just tasteless, and they pick it unripe, and it was picked two weeks ago. What people also don't understand is when you pick something, uh, the minute you pick it and it's juicy, it starts oxidizing because moisture is an oxidant. So uh, by the time you get it two weeks later, that moisture will have oxidized most of the vitamins. There's very little left. If you eat it right off the plant like you're supposed to, you're fine. But if it's trucked across the country, it's sitting on the shelf in the grocery store for – who knows how long and then you bring it home and it sits on your shelf for a while there's almost very there's very little nutrition left in it yeah uh, nitrogen pumped into the trucks fluorescent lighting and air i know right. you love air conditioning but i don't know about the air conditioning in those markets no windows it, no ventilation these babies are not alive anymore listen right. to marcus yeah right so uh, actually that that's where powdering comes in good because a lot of the powders those plants are picked when they're ripe, not unripe, they're dried immediately, and then it locks in. And they can last for 10 years, actually, with those things are much more nutritious. Uh, they tested oranges in some of the, the universities and found that uh, there's no vitamin C left in half the oranges out there that you're buying at the store because they oxidize because they're still in, in contact with moisture. So uh, we have to – they're just basic stuff. I'm, I'm getting off on all these tangents I love here, your but, tangents. <laughs> there's there's basic stuff that you need to uh, kind of know how nature's designed. We're supposed to walk up to a bush and just pick some berries and eat them on the spot. We're not supposed to like you know, uh, that, and that's actually why sometimes the frozen stuff is better than the the stuff that's sitting on the shelf because that frozen stuff was picked when the berry was ripe and frozen immediately and it's locked in. Whereas the stuff that that you the the, the fresh fruits and vegetables they're picked unripe. And then they, they spray them with stuff to make them more ripe or, you, or they just kind of wait two weeks. But a lot of plants don't even get their nutrients until they're ripe. Wow. So when wow. you're getting when you're plucking an unripe plant, you're never going to get those nutrients. Yep. I mean, it's still, it's still better than eating a hamburger or, you know, or... Well, junk. no, it really is. It's still better than eating a hamburger, but amen. I mean, yes, I'm about to invest in your amazing powders. I know... Marcus is so humble. He doesn't promote his own works or powders. If you watch his videos, they are strictly to make life better for humanity and the world. Truly. 
truly a humble, beautiful man. Though your powders are very high integrity. I've read the science behind them. I've read the tests, the third party tests. Um, I've read the, I've done so much research about the products you carry. Everybody go to MarcusRothkranz.com. Marcus oh, don't tell them to go to that because nobody knows how to spell my name. And, Just and tell them to go to HealAnything.com. HealAnything. The There's one of the 1,000 URLs. HealAnything.com. I can't wait to order them myself. One of which that I've been extremely excited to order is the Parasite Powder. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Nasty. Oh, yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about parasites and how we can live with them harmoniously? Oh, or it's going to freak people out. Uh, uh, what people don't realize is most of what you see in the mirror, most of what you weigh is not you. There are more bacteria cells that you're carrying around than human cells. Uh, you are a, uh, that mass that you think is you is, is a cohabiting world of all kinds of organisms and they're they're in you know when you're when it's good it's in balance you're supposed to have for example in your gut five pounds of probiotics that's the good gut flora that's 70 percent of your immune system and one pound of yeast which is the food supply for the 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 gut the flora now the problem is what do you do to feed the flora they, their main food supply is fiber. Wow. Okay, well, here's the problem. When you cook your food, that breaks down the fiber. You can say, well, cooking food makes food more absorbable. Yes, it does. It breaks down the fiber. That's true. It makes it more absorbable. But it becomes so absorbable that it doesn't even make it to the gut. It gets absorbed into your system through the stomach and, and, and the upper intestine and everything. Uh, before, So the, you're basically starving your gut flora. Yeah, there's some soluble fiber stuff, but they need the whole balance. Of it. Anyways, make a long story short, and when you break down fiber, it becomes sugar. And sugar, and what most of what we eat is junk food anyway. Bread, pasta, cereal, white rice, all that stuff all turns into sugar. And um, so what, what, feed, what does sugar feed? Sugar feeds all the opportunistic pathogens, the bacteria, fungus, mold, yeast, even cancer, like when, when they grow uh, in petri dishes in a lab to grow a, a test, a virus or something, they put it in sugar water because nothing grows a virus faster than sugar and water. And fructose water. Apple right. juice grows any, cancer any more than sugar. sugar. Yep. Yeah. Sugar, any kind of sugar. They right. love sugar. So yeah. when you have too much sugar in your system, it feeds the yeast, not the probiotics. So now the yeast grows out of control and becomes this monster. Now you got five times more yeast than probiotics and now you start having all kinds of problems. The yeast mutates into a fungal form uh, which then creates these things called hyphae which are like tentacles which work their way <laughs> all through your intestinal tract. They drill holes through your intestinal tract and work their way up. And now you've got holes in your intestinal tract. Now you have leaky gut. Now all your undigested proteins, because you didn't chew your food very well and your stomach acid's too low because you have stress and blah, blah, blah. So now you have undigested foreign proteins in your body going up through your system and causing autoimmune reactions. This is all because you had sugar feeding the yeast and now it punctures holes. In it. You know, and of course, now you're eating other stuff too. Most people eat animal products. With like dairy and milk and stuff, which is uh, which is lactose is a form of sugar. Uh, animal proteins are foreign to the human body, so they cause you know all kinds of problems too. And basically, cheese is nothing but fat and sugar and animal hormones. That's all it is. Um, so, yeah. so Good people, poison. so people are putting all kinds of garbage in their system, and it doesn't help us, but it does feed the pathogens, the bacteria, fungus, mold, yeast, parasites. And I can start getting into all the nasty worms and things, uh, but I think uh, I don't want to freak people out too much. Just, but the problem I love is, freaking people out, but, you know, <laughs> but that is why you should just go to Marcus's parasite video. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Every You cannot. Awesome. Everybody's got them. It's just a matter of how much. And it, it's just like anything, um, any kind of illness, disease, you, you like everybody's exposed to the worst of the worst out there. So the wide, like you can put 10 people in a room with cholera, whatever, you know, and eight of them will die and two of them won't. Why? Because they see that that's just it. What you call your body, is it a food supply for the good guys or the bad guys? Which right. ones are you feeding? Because 
if you were dropped in nature and you had to eat what was out there in nature, 80% of what you'd eat is bitter stuff. It's not sweet. Yep. And there's That's a reason right. for that because bitter cleans your liver and your liver is has over 4,000 functions. Uh, it doesn't just filter bad stuff. It creates your hormones, a lot of your hormones. It, it, uh, it regulates so many functions in the body, um, including you know your antibodies, a lot of uh, antibodies. So if your liver is clogged, if it's not working right, you're basically screwed. That, that's where all disease starts. Yep. And, bitter is better. Bitter yeah, is better. Exactly. And most Love. people avoid bitter altogether and they only go for the sweet stuff when they choose what to eat it's based on taste texture and how it makes them feel not for function strictly does it taste good which is usually sweet stuff the texture and how it makes them feel does it give them a rush um and that's really the only that's how people choose their food not because is this something i really need is this good for me or not so most of what they eat is junk that feeds the parasites, yeah. and parasites are thankful, and the more you do that, you're feeding the cancer, you're feeding the worms, you're feeding the bacteria, the young, the fungus, the moldy. So when people start having problems, it's not a surprise. You are feeding the wrong guys. Yeah, who, your you little know. craving isn't your little craving, honey. It's right. Mr. Magoo's little craving. It's those little parasites that live inside you from licking your dog in the face and okay. touching doorknobs. Yeah. It's those parasites every day, yeah. but walking yeah. barefoot. Well, the bummer is that I'm all about earthing and connecting with Mama Earth every day like you are living, you know, in the desert. It's so warm. You can be – I barefoot walk every day. So, like, I have to just say, you know, the mantra every step I take, like, I am absorbing only the beneficial elements of Mother Earth. I am not absorbing the parasites, but I probably am. So, that being said, I know that you and I stand – on a similar footing here about gut health that is like what I deem and you deem the most of utmost importance in terms of actual healing and optimum health though I'm sure my clients would love to hear about it from you from someone besides myself you know uh, telling them about gut health so can you please tell us about how to start the cleansing process whether you have parasites candida cancer anything like, yeah, the, the, I, it's the same thing no matter what health condition anybody has, the answer is the same. And I, it's so annoying. I mean, I almost feel like like just just shutting off the world because I get so many emails every day from saying, what do I take for this? What do I take for that? What do I take? The answer isn't what to take. There isn't a magic pill because they say, well, I've done some research and I found that this, this, this is good for that. Is it okay? What people are doing is they're trying to find some magic stuff to take to make their problems go away while they still keep eating the food and the crap that caused the problem in the first place. Nobody wants to stop the cause. I said that's the only way you're going to get rid of your problem is to stop doing what caused it in the first place. If you're eating bread, pasta, cereal, milk, cookies, sugar, bagels, anything, you know, cooked dead crap that you don't find in nature – you're feeding the opportunistic guys inside you whose job it is to recycle you. Yes. If you are not healthy, you're going to get recycled. That's the way nature designed it. Okay, like if you look in, in like Africa, you know, the, the, the sick of the herd, they get sick and die and the lions pick them off. Yep. That's the only way the species is going to continue is if only the healthy stay alive. So if you start – becoming uh, a weaker part of the herd by eating pizza and pasta and white rice and, and cooked food and sugar and milk and all that crap, you're going to be recycled pretty soon. You're not going to be around very long. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's by design. And that is, it's genius. It's beautiful. And then, so the people, so it's really silly when people say, just tell me what magic herb to take to make my problem go away. Well, are you still feeding the problem? And I always use the example of fire. How do you put out a fire? Well, you know, like somebody's body is, is burning. It's on fire, right? It's got a disease. Well, the way you put out a fire, somebody will say, is you pour water on it, right? That's the yeah. traditional way of putting out a fire. I go, okay, but it's not going to put it out if you're still pouring gasoline on the fire at the same time. Gasoline on fire is always more powerful than water on fire. It's like rock, scissor, papers. Right, right, right. Great analogy. Like, True. Uh, so it's true. That's what most people are doing. By eating the wrong foods, you're pouring fuel on the fire and you will never go out no matter how much water you pour on it. And so 
the really the first thing to do to anything is stopping any kind of illness is to stop feeding the problem. Yeah. You cannot get better unless you stop. You have to you have to acknowledge and accept what it is that you have done to feed the problem. And everyone, oh, it's genetic and. I, I'd like to say a, a nasty word about that. Right. But, uh, well, we'll it, just say a positive word. Genie in your genes. Go read it. Right. Exactly. Epigenetics has proven that your genetics is just a bunch of switches. They're ones and zeros, just like binary code. And yeah, a lot of them are in the wrong position. The, the light switch is off, so there's no light. Well, just turn it back on. You have to. And the only and the only way you can do that is if you allow your body to work right, right. and you don't send it the wrong signals. And there's ways to to help that along, but. The biggest one is to, when you get junk in your, in, in, when you buy, like, like say, a, 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 an old junk car, and people, they, they, they want to make a, a show car out of it. What do they do? Like with a house, when you rebuild a house, a car, a body, a life, you strip it down of all the rust and the bad stuff, and right down to the frame, you sandblast it down, and then you rebuild it with only good stuff. That's what you do with your body. You don't keep pouring termites on the wood. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's what you got to do. You got to stop the bad stuff. You got to have the guts to stop the the uh, the emotional addiction to certain foods and things, and and accept that and stop it. And then um, you got to clean it out. So now the first step is to stop doing the bad stuff, to putting it in you, and that includes negativity and you know uh, stress and all that, uh, bad relationships and things like that. Yeah. Secondly, you have to clean up the mess that was created. And that is detoxing, it's fasting, it's cleansing. So that as you go through this cleansing phase, and it doesn't happen overnight. You're not getting rid of 40 years of bad decisions and a, a, a dying body in two weeks. Right. Come on, people. Everybody wants instant thing. Well, I ordered it on Amazon last night. How come it's not here yet? Everybody is so spoiled with instant gratification nowadays like come on guys you took 40 years of screwing up your life you know eating snickers bars for uh, you're not going to get rid of the problem you're not going to rebuild a beautiful human body with 60 trillion cells in a week it's not going to happen right so first stop doing the bad stuff secondly you got to reclean it out and then you only rebuild with the proper building materials and yes. it doesn't mean cold celery sticks and, and carrots that's what people think oh i just i'm gonna have this un unpleasant experience eating just boring no that's why we Karen and I wrote the, uh, the 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 cookbook and we make all these videos showing like you know it's actually better tasting and better for you than the real thing we show people how to make you know pasta and pizza and chocolate ice cream and cakes and things but the healthy uncooked it's never been in an oven it never goes over 118 degrees, so it's not cold. It's still kind of it can still warm your food. You just don't go over 118 because that's where the enzymes get killed. Yeah. And the way I explain this to people is, um, if you take an apple and you plant it in the ground, you get an apple tree, right? The seeds turn into an apple tree. But if you took that apple and you put it in an oven and you bake it, you make apple pie out of it, and then you plant that in the ground, what happens? Nothing. You get mold. It's dead. Yeah. Well, something. What was the difference? Heat. Anything over 118 degrees will kill the enzymes, the life force in the food. So, that, so that's what they call raw food. It's, it's um, not necessarily cold. You just don't heat it over a temperature that the sun would heat something when, it's, when a, a fruit or a seed falls from the tree onto the ground. Here in the desert, it doesn't get over 118. I mean, it's you know hottest spot in the world, Death Valley, an hour away from here. I mean, it doesn't get over that. That, that that's like the hottest day of ever. But the seeds are still viable. Yeah. And that, and that's really the secret. That's the key. You got to keep the life force in the food. And most people, they kill their food. Yeah, it's well, dead. Yeah, you, microwaving's even worse, people. Yeah, yeah. Well, Look at a baked you apple. Your... What about a microwaved apple? You ain't gonna get nothing. You'll get radiated soil, not even mold. Radiation. Thanks for putting radiation back in our soil, microwavers. Just kidding. God bless us all. But no, I love what you said about you have to have the guts to stop doing what you're doing. You have to have the guts to stop. You clearly had them. You gave up everything. You threw your TV in a dumpster. I hope that dumpster was labeled Goodwill. <laughs> Whenever I hear your story, I'm like, I really hope that state dump was really a Goodwill state no, dump. <laughs> I actually smashed it. I wanted to see this stuff smash into pieces. No, I it get it. I get it. There really is something about destroying the mandala of our lives. There really is something to that. I had a therapist tell me once in the middle of my depression, because I was bitter and I wasn't eating bitters enough, 
because when you're bitter, you need to eat bitters because it'll stop right, your depression. Right. And my gut was clogged and all that gut clogged brain fog. So I was in the midst of my own depression in life. And my therapist is like, you need to go to the beach, dig a hole and just smash glasses in the hole like every day like go to a recycling dump get glass bottles and throw them in a ditch so you know i did that a few times so i understand the fulfillment in that so marcus you're amazing but no i'm so yeah like marcus said you have to have the guts and if you don't have the guts it's probably because your guts are clogged so the first thing to do is unclog your gut the seen people which was jesus his real peeps wrote all about it. They talk about sticking a gourd up there, letting the river fill you yeah. up the you've hollow had, gourd. you read the Essene Gospel. Oh That's my great. gosh, yes I have. I do a whole presentation. I do PowerPoint presentations all over the globe about all this stuff. But um, the birds, I love what you say in your video, one of your videos that I watched, that even birds have these long beaks and they slurp up water and turn around and inject it into their own behinds. Birds do it. Jesus did it. It's on cave walls. It's in hieroglyphics. The Egyptians, the Mayans, the Aztecs, all ancient peoples talk about it. The healthiest people on earth do it. Proof is in the pudding. Look at, in the raw vegan carob avocado pudding, look at Marcus. He looks better today in his mid-50s than he did with his bottle cap glasses when he was dying of all every organ failure in his 20s, teens. Not even looking at the birds and laying in the field could have saved you from all that dairy you were ingesting on your backwoods dairy farm, right? You know, the irony is the field I was lying in, the thistles, I mean, my parents told me, go out there and cut the thistles down and, and the, you know, the sticky things, the, 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 the Velcro balls. Yeah. That's the best stuff. That's burdock. That's burdock. the best stuff for cleaning your liver. Right. You know, and, and the dandelions and all that, the, what they call weeds. It was there saying, you, you, you need us. Totally. Wow. Like, yeah. Unbelievable. I know. I pick, I go and pick my own breakfast every day. I go out in, I'm in Seattle. Thank God for the rain. It creates this emerald city. I go out and pick some of that emerald every day and juice it. My dandelion greens are in my breakfast every single day of my life. And I'm going, because of you and your amazing wild foraging book and videos, I am going to plant burdock and milk thistle and every other wild herb that grows so easily without any water or anything to make us strong and happy and healthy and abundant and vibrant. Amen. So yes, I'm going to plant all that stuff. I've got my wood chips down. I'm ready. So April 1st, get ready burdock to grow for my health. Okay. Thank you. So yeah, parasites, wild foraging, gut health, fasting, letting go. Marcus is a huge advocate of letting go and like not taking more than we create. We're the only species on earth that take more than we give back. Like, Take what you need. Don't rape our planet. Don't rape your own inner self with your bad decisions. And then, of course, making love and having a beautiful, amazing relationship. Marcus, you're an expert on that one. I don't know if that's for this video. But <laughs> Marcus breaks everything down just like enemas break down the mucoid plaque in your guts. He is truly one of the biggest inspirations. I highly recommend you get his book. What is your motto? I know you said a few amazing key things, but like, what is your goal on earth? Kara, oh, we're t we get to go back to making love. You can bring Kara on. <laughs> uh, well, it's basically, she, she just said it. It's, it's let, let go. It, oh, it's, uh, yeah. Allow, yeah. whatever, you know. I just noticed my face is so red. I took some niacin before I, the, the interview. Oh, I, I like, thought you looked tan. I was, no, that's why I said something. I'm like, Marcus is proof is in the pudding. You're raging. Well, I am. I am glowing. Cam, but I took some nice and I got this buzz going. It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's the only way I like to interview people. Please, get a buzz, <laughs> get in your comfort zone, have your loved one in the background making you juice. Let's have a great interview, okay? <laughs> Everybody get buzzed. I, yes, I, I, that needs to be my, my new one, buzzed and interviewed. <laughs> You're so amazing. You are, the re you are all about the regeneration of the nation, People, well, I, I'll just say what I, one of your mottos that I love, which is just everybody getting back to themselves and self-love, self-care, because when you care about yourself, you can care for the others and the planet and the beings that we share this planet with. And your whole goal is not to sell powders, not to sell cookbooks. I mean, that's amazing. And I'm so grateful you've written them for our benefit, but it's to get people to happiness and vibrance and health and right. It's what you've gotten yourself to from a place of illness, sickness, and 
just not connected with nature or your heart. Right, exactly. Yeah, the, the, really the message, the, the best thing to do is to listen to that quiet little voice inside you and and give it some credence and follow it and trust it. And, it the, and this is why I wrote the books because that little voice, you got two voices. You got this one and then you got the quiet one that's whispering stuff to you that feels really good. It gets, excites you, but it scares you because it's telling you to do something that nobody's ever done before. That's because that's your mission. Yes. And the reason nobody's ever done it before is because it's your mission, not theirs. And what do we spend most of our lives doing? Copying that guy or that guy because it worked for them. Well, they're successful, so I'm going to try what they, they did. But that worked for them, not you. The only way you're going to be successful is doing what's, what you're here to do. And everybody's afraid to do that. They're, they're afraid to listen to that inner voice that they have. Because every pioneer that's ever made history, they, they – followed a voice that told them to do something that's never been done before. And everybody said, you're crazy, you'll die, you'll lose everything, you'll go broke. Yeah, and you might. But that's what you got to go through to get to whatever that is, you know. And and it, that's what people need to have the courage to do is to follow that voice, even though they might lose what they presently have. But that doesn't mean they're going to get. They're not going to get something better down the road. Because anytime you make a a, a a void in your life, that void's going to be filled by something. Yes, it's the way the universe works. It doesn't like emptiness. It likes to fill emptiness with something. So it's usually the latest model, you know, the 2017 yeah. model. No, uh, it's like yeah, it's like Guns N' Roses said in Civil War. I love that song. That's when I first heard that concept when I was like 10 years old, listening to Civil War. Guns N' Roses are like. We How old are you? Feel, I'm 40. We because I I, I I hung out with those guys. Steve Adler bought my house. And, oh and, my god! And, no way. Yeah, I, I used to hang out with Slash. We we went up to Chicago to make the uh, the Guns N' Roses pinball machine. I did the artwork for that. Oh my god! You're I so. You're amazing. I used to hang out with that crowd. That was my scene. I used to go to the Cat House all the time, you know, with Motley Crue and stuff. Was... Oh, my God. Well, you're you, – honestly, you still – you look like a relic from that era. Like, the hair, the, the cross, the threads. I mean, I love I it. Like, I am. It's my I'm favorite there. era. Yeah. You're the Renaissance man who went through the 80s. Yeah, it was yeah. funny because they always made fun of me because I never did drugs or anything. I, I, I was sitting in the rainbow in the corner and, and – uh, it was funny because Andrew Dice Clay would look over and say, hey, I want you to make a pinball machine of me. Oh, my like, God. <laughs> That's like, so amazing. Move over you know, album covers. Marcus made the pinball machine, okay? Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I was God. the number one pinball artist for like 10 years. I didn't t want people to know about it, but I did all the big games, Star Wars, Lethal Weapon, Jurassic Park, blah, 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 blah. Oh, my gosh. But, I didn't want to get known for that. It was just like this silly thing I did on the side. And, like, I wanted to be known as the filmmaker, you know, the guy that makes Hollywood movies, but not the pinball guy. Oh, my gosh. Well, the, people can make their own movies as they play. So you've helped everyone individually make their own movie through your art. Well, we right. have the Spider-Man pinball machine at my parents' house. Did you make that one? Spider-Man? All right. Well, sorry. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll look into the Marcus art artwork pinball machines. But yeah, in, in Guns N' Roses Civil War, remember when he's talking, he's like, you create that vacuum and you fill that vacuum. I'm like microphoning it. But yeah, like I heard that and it was like, when you create the vacuum, don't fill it with Civil War. I don't know, but that was like the first time I ever heard. Axel, create that vacuum. Fill that vacuum. Mother Nature does it automatically and Axel it sings does. about it. It does, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, well, have you don't you... have to really try. You just, what? It, 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 the, I guess if, in reference to another movie, you know, Field of Dreams, if yes. you build it, it will come. Make, make your life ready. Like, people are always waiting for that fantasy partner to show up. And they want that partner to be perfect, to have all their dreams. Well, that partner is not going to want you if you're not equal to them to yes. what that fantasy is if you want somebody hot and sexy and smart and rich whatever it is that you want if that if you're not like that yourself you yeah. think they're gonna relate to you to want you like you have to be you have to be equal you have to be able to you know relate to each other so your job really is what i tell people is to prepare to be to become that fantasy person and then that actual real fantasy person will only then get attracted to you because they will recognize themselves in you. And like, I, I was, I was not ready for Kara 10 years ago. It wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have happened because we still had some growing and developing and 
preparation to do. So really, to make that space for whatever it is you want in life, you got to prepare for it. You got to get ready for it. You got to, you got to like, you know, like Rocky. You got to train for it. Heck yeah! Preferably out in the desert naked, my friends. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> Adam and Eve tempted by the serpent. Those are parasites. Don't get tempted by the certain serpent out in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> the serpents everywhere. But what's, what's funny is, like, if you eat, you know, bad food, like cook, cook crap, you're feeding the worms. Yeah. So in a way, the the bad food is what's giving strength to the serpent, which is actually inside you, um, and it's telling you, eat more bagels, <laughs> eat more chocolate, or you know. You want that milkshake. You really do. And you're like, yeah, I want that milkshake. So so think about it. We know that pizza is bad for you and an apple is good for you. So why are we choosing the pizza? We know it's bad for us. Yep. You're not so we conti- yourself. We consciously are doing things that we know are bad for us. We know cigarettes and alcohol and all that crap, whatever it is bad, but we still do it. Yeah. I love that argument. Oh, well, you only live once. Yeah, you only live once. Make it vibrant. Make it right, good. Exactly. You only yeah, live right. once. Look, look at how people are living in this world. The last 40 years of their life is they're, they don't, they look, they look 40 years older. They're, they're nothing but health problems. They can't get it up anymore. They have nothing but relationships. They're bitter. They're nasty. They're unhappy. They, they're not young anymore. They're, they can't, you know, is that what you want? The last 40, 50 years of your life to watch yourself decline into misery yeah, totally. while the rest of the world is having fun? Yeah. Or or do you want to stay young and have a good time until the moment you die? Well, that that's – you're in control of that. God. You're so amazing. Thank you. Thank you for your inspiration. Well, have you attracted your tribe? Your vibe attracts your tribe. Have you attracted your tribe in this world or do you still consider yourself – a briefcase toting loner connecting with magpies. I, I don't belong. I don't want to belong to any tribe. I'm a loner. Me I want too. to just have one hot girl and have sex all the time and hide in the beach somewhere and, and just live my fantasy. Me too. Listen to, rock, you know, l- yeah. listen to heavy metal and, and, and <laughs> wear, wear, wear sexy clothes and have sparkles and whatever. You know, that, that's, I want to have a good time. <laughs> You're so awesome, Marcus. Oh, my God. I just appreciate your authenticity so much. Yep, Jesus said it, or actually the Gospel of Thomas. The truth shall set you free. Whatever you don't bring out will destroy you. Whatever you bring out will save you. Save yourselves. Bring out your truth. Live your truth. Marcus is a shining example of living his truth, okay? Thank you for showing and sharing your light with us here on Humanitarian Chronicles. You are such the humanitarian that I need to chronicle. And I love, we're very much on the same page. I have never felt like I've belonged to any group. I have always been my a loner. But I mean, I have lots of friends. But like, and I always say I'm still trying to find my tribe or my village or my commune. I'm um, building it, it. Wherever I am, I build it. But, you know, like. The, tribe, build, the tribe's overrated. Don't wait for it. Just just live your own life. That's what it, I'm doing. The less, bag, the less baggage you have, the faster you can travel and have fun. Oh, you're so beautiful. Amen. That is so true. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Marcus, for being such a shining example of that. And I hope to meet you on that beach with my lover so we can have a double date and cheers to over green juice <laughs> together one of these days soon. Yes, okay. you're so amazing. The loners need to stick together. The loners need to have their own tribe. But, no, you're so incredible. Please look Marcus up on marcusnews.com with a K, com. Marcus with a K. M-A-R-K-U-S-N-E-W-S.com. He has thousands of other websites. His books are incredibly life-changing. Even just reading the titles of his books will cause a paradigm shift inside of you. Okay? I'm not kidding. Just They're so amazing. Even just read the titles and you'll shift. But definitely read the books. Heal Yourself 101 is the Bible, is the the health Bible. I just, I so appreciate you, Marcus. Thank you so much for being. Well, uh, what else can I be? You're amazing. Well, a lot of people try to be a lot of other things. So I'm glad that you've come to that so you can be a living example of it. Stay strong. Stay away from the drugs and caffeine. Stay close to the anima bags. And... (laughs) Read Marcus's works. They will inspire you to the depths, and you too will have as much bouncing, 
brilliant, vibrant energy as he does in his mid fifties. You can have it at any age. Okay. So, oh my God, the last thing I want to say, I'm so sorry, is that I so admire you for actually getting through to your father. Like that is one of my biggest dreams is actually getting through to the people I love about health. And I know your father struggled with prostate cancer and because of what you showed him, he healed his own prostate cancer and is vibrant, still alive. No, he's not alive anymore. And there's a whole other story in that. Um, video. He, he healed it. And then as commonly uh, what happens with a lot of people, and this is very common, is you feel invincible. And then you go celebrate with a bagel, with a piece of toast, with some cheese, with, oh. you know. Yeah. And, uh, and then you, it's just, but then it comes back twice as hard. So yeah, for five years, he was like, like you just feel, and this is very common with people and it's human nature. This is the nature of human beings to always see what we can get away with. Yeah. That's people love to cheat. They love to see, they're going to take it right to the edge. And it's like, it's like if a plane is crashing, people think if I hop off at the last second, then I'll be okay. The plane will crash, but I'll just hop off at the last second. You know, good luck with that. It's it's just the way people think, and um, and there was a little bit more to it than that. He he uh, never got to uh, achieve his dream in life of what he wanted to do, and he was de uh, depressed, and it had I think it was a lot more than just physical what to eat. Yeah. But but he did find peace in the last few years of his life by accepting more like people from. Uh, that era, they had a harder time, and uh, they're very rigid in the way they think a lot of times. So, for him to let go and accept a more peaceful way of being was well, it was was good. That was good. Oh, so that's amazing. Uh, yeah, I, I pray for that with my own family and loved ones. So you are you are such an inspiration and an example for me in that area. So. Just research Marcus Rothkrans, watch his entertaining and educational videos, read his inspirational books, get his powders. I'm ordering the Parasite Powder today. Thank you for doing what you do, Marcus. Keep carrying the torch, my brother, and I hope to see you soon so you can light mine and I can carry it back on, back forward, okay. back forward. Love to Kara and your amazing life over there in the desert. It's like Kermit the Frog. I know. <laughs> You're so amazing. Do, 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 do. Miss Piggy signing off. Okay. Lots of love. Thank you, Marcus. Take care. Bye.